All right, so here we are. It is now time to review the 10B and the 12B. If you're looking for my cutoffs, I will have them, a cutoff prediction video, a little bit later. By the way, uh, some of you have been asking, how is your dog doing? And this is my dog. And he's doing really good, just so you know. Uh, he had a very serious health scare um, earlier this year in the summertime. Uh, almost lost him. His bladder almost burst. And uh, lucky to still have him. He, uh, he uh, had bladder stones and it blocked up. He couldn't pee. And so his bladders almost burst and they had to do special surgery and then they messed up the surgery at one location. He had to be rushed to a different hospital. And uh, all told, it was quite the ordeal. So uh, he's doing really well. Um, if you'd like to donate to his fund, uh, it's on my community page posts. Um, I'm still paying about $9,000 more that I owe on that surgery. It was very expensive. If you'd like to say thank you to the channel uh, for the solutions or something, if you want to consider donating to that, it would be much appreciated because uh, it's going to be a while before I can pay that off. Okay, so 2025 AMC 10B problem 1, 12B problem 1. The instructions on a 350 gram bag of coffee beans say that proper brewing of a large mug of pour over coffee. I think what's bad about this, not a hard problem, but there's so many little words like proper brewing, you know, of a large mug of pour over coffee. You're trying to pay attention to all these little details just in case there's some weird one in it, right? And so you're like, it requires 20 grams of coffee beans. What is the greatest number of properly brewed? And you're like, wait, what was pro Okay, all right, I guess, all right, we're okay. But you're like a little bit like, Wait, <laughs> I don't know when you're reading it. Large mug, but did they say large mug? Okay, so these are, okay, okay, all right, all right. They're not gonna get us with these properly brewed large mugs of coffee that can be made from the coffee beans in that bag. I would say the overall <laughs> challenge of this problem is simply reading comprehension and that you're hyper vigilant to not make a mistake. So you like keep comparing all the words. Are they trying to trick us somewhere or trap us? And it's just normal, but they write it like there's something hidden here. <laughs> so 350 grams, it takes 20 grams uh, to make a large mug. And so you're just gonna go ahead and take this 350 divided by 20, knock off the zero, 17.5 you're only able to get 17, but it's the hypervigilance that probably takes this problem an extra 30 seconds because you just don't wanna make a mistake on your first problem of the test. Let's get to problem two. Again, so as a reminder, my predictions of what I think the cutoffs will be will be in a separate video, but I would say it's probably pretty comparable to the A. Uh, can't go much better than that right now. So 2025 AMC 10B problem 2, 12B. Problem 2, Jerry wrote down the ones digit of each of the first 2,025 positive squares. So 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, all the way to 2025 squared. You're not stopping at 45 squared. That's not what they're saying. Make sure you gas that difference. Uh, so it's 1, 4, 9, 16, but only the 6. 25, but only the 5. 36, but only the, the 6. What is the sum of all the numbers Jerry wrote down? At first, you might be like, uh, if you haven't done any number theory at all, it might seem like, who can possibly do this? But what you have to realize, realize is that every single number that ends in 1, for instance, will always end in 1 when you square it. Every number that ends in 2 will end in 4 when you square it. Every number that ends in 3 will end in 9, and 4 will end in 6, and so on and so forth. So you don't need to do all of them. You just need to know what the sum of the first 10 is. And you can ignore 10s because they're all going to contribute 0 to the 1s digit. So we'll just write these out. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, 8 squared, 64, 81, um, yeah, 49, 64, 81, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, the 0. So at that point, every group of 10 will have the same sum. So I'm just going to go 1 and 9 is 10, 4 and 6 is 10, 6 and 4 is 10, 9 and 1 is 10, and add one more, it's 5, which is very interesting that it's 45 because 20, 25. Uh, so the sum of this is 45. 
and that's every 10. How many 10s are we going to get? We're going to get 202 times 10 plus the same first five right here, which is 10, 25. So we're going to get 45 times 202 plus 25. The way that I would want you to do this is to split it in your mind to 200. And so if you do 200 times 45, it's like uh, 2 times 45 is 90 times 100, it's 9,000, right? And then plus 2 times 45 is 90, so you have 9,090. Um, yeah, you could also make it 90 times 101, which is great. Also, lots of little things that you can do like that. 90 times 101, of course, is 909 with a zero. Uh, and then you'll add 25 to end up at 9115. Let's get to problem three. Continuing on with the rapid fire set for problem three of the 2025 10B. Uh, a Pascal-like, by the way, I did mention in the past, they sometimes have a theme between the A test and the B test, a themed problem. Last year, I speculated there would be one. There actually was not one that I could identify or that I guessed at least. Uh, but this year there was. There was a Pascal-like triangle on the A test. And here we have another one. And on the A test, you were really just looking for a pattern in the sums of the rows. So if you did that problem and you learned how to do it, you got a little edge on this one about how you might approach it. So a Pascal-like triangle has 10 as the top row and 10 followed by one as the second row. In each subsequent row, the first number is 10, the last number is one, and as in the standard Pascal triangle, each other number in the row is the sum of the two numbers directly above it. The first four rows are shown below. By the way, if you're in China, you might refer to it as the Yanghui Triangle. Um, I think he actually did work on it before Pascal did, but Pascal's work became more famous um, across the world uh, because he did a lot of other things with it. But the earlier research was done by Yang Hui. It's what I remember reading. Don't quote me on it. Could be wrong. Uh, anyhow, so... First row of four rows are shown below. What is the sum of the digits of the sum of the numbers in the 11th row? Basically, start with the sum of the numbers in the 11th row as your objective. Well, here, we're just going to have to look for a pattern, right? That's what we did in the first one. You looked for a pattern and you capitalized on it. No, I didn't make a video of that one, but I did solve it. I uh, just never made the video for it. Maybe in the future, I'll make that one also. So this sum is 10, and then I have 11. And then I have 11 plus 11, which is 22. And then I have 33 plus 11, and so I have 44. And I'm going to go ahead and go one more row down, 31, even though we can probably see what's happening now. Uh, 10, 31, 33, 13, and 45. Oh, no, not 45. <laughs> That's my sum over there. One. Yeah, the, those are my sums. I should probably cut those off so I don't try to add them. Uh, so now we're going to have 11, and you're going to have 44, and 33 is 77. So you're going to have 88. And you should be able to see by now 11 times 1, or 2 to the 0. 11 times 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd. So in row 2... I have 11 times 2 to the 0. Um, if we want to go all the way to the 11th row, we're going to want 11 times 2 to the 9th. Um, if you just look at the pattern, 11 times 2 to the 1st, this is row 3, but my exponent is 1. You're doing a comparison between what row you're on or your term number. If you do a lot of sequence series problems in the past, this is kind of the way you develop an nth term rule. Um, obviously, this is also a geometric se sequence or wh whatnot, so we could also use that property too, but it's just not needed as my point to go and use the formula and things like that. It must be that my row number subtracted 2 is my exponent. You're looking for a pattern. 
Uh, pattern recognition, a significant sign of intelligence. So it's something to try to get good at and become better at over time. So um, 11 times 2 to the 9th. What's 2 to the 9th? It's 512. We say to memorize at least your first 11 powers of 2, maybe even your 12th, 4096. So we have 11 times this. My trick for 11s on a three digit number is put a zero and recopy the number or four digits, the same thing. We get two, three, six, five. 11 and five is 16. The answer will be D. Let's get to problem four. And on to the next problem in our rapid fire set, 202510 B, problem four, 12 B, problem three. The value of the two-digit number AB in base 7, you should immediately write 7A plus B. This is what you write when you see that. Now, if you don't know what base 7 is, you haven't done intro to number theory yet, I will have a new class for this book starting the first week of December. We go very in-depth and cover everything in the text. If you'd like to be a part of it, there's a maximum of eight spots, and two of them are already taken. So reach out to me through my channel if you'd like to be a part of that group. Uh, six spots left. So how does this work? Okay, think about it as base seven is just like base 10. If I give you 813 in base 10, you might say that's 800 plus 10 plus three. All that we mean by base 10 is that I am multiplying by the base squared with the digit plus one times the base to the first plus three times the base to the zero power. That's what the base is. You do the same thing in base seven, it's just that instead of tens, you would have sevens and you couldn't have eight because the digits in base seven cannot get any larger than six. So that's what's going on here. So it must be a times not 10 to the first, but seven to the first, and then you have b. So 7a plus b is going to equal the value of the two-digit number ba in base 9. What is a plus b? So this is going to be 9b plus a. Again, converting to base 9, this is the tens place, but it's not tens, it's nines. So it's the nines place and then the ones place. So all you're going to do at this point uh, is probably subtract a to get 6a equals 8b. I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2 on both sides. So I'm going to get 3a equals 4b. The easiest thing to do would be to let a be 4 and b be 3. But will that work if I let a be 4 and b be 3? Meaning this side's a multiple of 3, then this side has to be also. This side's a multiple of 4, so this side has to be also. Let's see. Would Here's what you do. You go, well, I do have my answer right here, right? But would we just go, oh, I got it, I add it, I'm done, I'm on to the next one? No, because we make foolish mistakes. And so what you have to do is clarify, or not clarify, you have to prove to yourself that you haven't made a mistake. This is what the smart students do and how they avoid silly errors. So the way that you're going to check it is you're just going to see what this is. What is 4 times 7 plus 3? It's 31. What about 34 base 9? That's 3 times 9 plus 4, also 31 we can confidently say the answer is A. Let's get on to the next one. And now for the last one of our rapid fire set for this 2025 10B. In triangle ABC, AB is 10, AC is 18. The picture's not there, by the way. I just wanted to save a little bit of time in the video so I pre-drew it so I don't have to draw it during the uh, video. So AB 10, AC 18 and angle B is 130 degrees. First thing you notice about 130 is it's not 120. It's also not 150, and you don't have a lot of those kinds of things going on. So maybe, maybe you could split it and make it like 190 and 40. Like you don't know, but there's not a lot of good things to think about with 130, right? So let O be the center of the circle containing the points. In other words, it's the circumcenter. And you might say, well, what if I did perpendicular bisectors of all of the sides, because that's where O would be found. Maybe I do something with that. And it's not a bad thought. You're correct, by the way. You could draw perpendicular bisectors to locate where it would be. 
Um, but is it really going to help or is it going to add a bunch of lines? Let's see what else we could do. What is the degree measure of angle CAO? By the way, I think it's kind of fun if you let, if you let angle equal CA, like you let the angle symbol equal CA and you do substitution, up here you only get cab, but down here you get chocolate. And I think that's pretty great. I don't know what made me think of that, except I'm ADHD. Uh, so yeah, it looks like part of chocolate, and I think about it because chocolate's pretty good, even though I don't eat chocolate anymore. I, eat, I eat dark chocolate, but I don't eat regular chocolate anymore. But 100% cacao. There's not very good. It's pretty bitter. Uh, but got magnesium. It's good for you. So um, yeah, what is the degree measure of that angle CAO? Let's go ahead and put O in here somewhere, about here approximately. And if they said CAO, maybe we should draw it. Keep in mind, it's the center of the circle. So I go to here, and I go to here, and uh, it almost looks like 90 degrees over there, but it's not. It's just a pad, not, uh, not drawn to scale circle. So don't look at this and go, oh, it's 90, stop that. Uh, your drawings are not to scale typically when you draw them and you just have to look at them conceptually not as a visually accurate drawing. But this is an inscribed angle of 130, which means the angle, the arc going around over here is 260, and the arc going over here must be 120 then as a result. And because it's 120, wait, wait, not 120, 100, 100. <laughs> not when I have 380 degree circle, we have a 360 degree circle, so it's a 100 degrees, but O is now going to be a 100 degrees central angle. You know, it's kind of close to 90 actually now that we look at it. And so you might think, all right, but how's that going to get me a CAO? Well, we do have radii. This will be 40 and this will be 40. Another thing you might have done, by the way, is you could have extended this side out and this whole side would be 180, and since this part is 100, this part here would be 80 degrees, and that's an inscribed angle that cuts that arc, so you could also get 40 that way, although the fastest way is probably the isosceles. So we get answer choice C. Uh, this is, by the way, where I did implement my strategy this year that I mentioned in the Plan B video. I went to 11 after this point, but I'm going to go to 6 next on my film session. Get there in a moment.